Hi, my name's Ben, my pronouns are he, him, and I'm here to tell you how to get nothing done. That is, if you follow this advice, you will minimize your productivity and spend the most time possible doing it. And the good news is, you're already following some of these simple steps. The first step is to always be working. Now, that sounds a bit counterintuitive, so let's examine what happens when you decide to always be working. Well, the first step to always working is that you've got to find something to do. And because you've got to always be working, you need that task as quickly as possible before you can be sure it's the most important thing. If you're lucky, it won't be useful at all. Maybe it'll actually be detrimental. In 2009, Microsoft found that only a third of their features improved the metrics they were meant to improve. If you always have to be working, you don't have time to validate your assumptions or run an experiment. You've just got to be straight in. Now, any time you can't work on your task, you have to pick up another. We'd rather pick up another task than stop working for even a second. Oh. So, the benefit of having a lot of tasks on the go, which will happen naturally, is that it's much harder to finish a task with the more tasks we have on the go. And we only are productive if we finish a task. And the other thing, a huge benefit about having a lot of tasks on the go, is you don't have to work very hard to lose track of a task. You'll naturally have your less important tasks flow down the drain when you can only work on them for a short period of time, and most of that time is spent context switching. Ooh. Ah, yes. Um, <laughs> your lost tasks will either be completely abandoned or you'll have to turn them, hand them over to someone else. So either your time is wasted or you get to waste time with someone else passing over context. And even better, prioritize all your tasks equally. This lets you rotate through your tasks with the illusion of being more productive while you're actually, actually focusing on none of them and context switching as much as you want. Here you can see that the always working approach takes a lot longer to get a task done than the one at a time approach. And that extra delay is where the magic happens. <laughs> Ooh. The more you delay finishing a task, the less time you get benefiting from whatever it was meant to achieve, and the more likely it is an emergency will come up. And believe me, an emergency will come up. They always do. So when an emergency comes up, that will become your new top priority. That task that was precariously close to being finished, well, that becomes an afterthought, and all of your other tasks that are on the go get completely forgotten. Now, if you weren't always working, this emergency might be no big deal. But always working has maximized the disruption and caused the most delay possible. And that's exactly what we're looking for. Now, I want to stress that while I'm talking about emergencies, any new priority or any task that comes with a deadline can count as an emergency. So there is a lot of things that can be causing these kind of delays. Now, while we, we could wait for these tasks to come up organically, why not skip this step? Start with more than one task and actively volunteer for more as they come up. Be more than 100% busy. Now you get all of the delay from before with none of the time waiting for new tasks. And while small tasks are fine, they are easier to finish. Work in really big chunks. Spend a month working on a task and then show it to someone to get feedback. They're gonna have a lot of suggestions for you. So now you've got a load more work to do and you've still not actually finished anything. And as a bonus, while you're waiting for that feedback, you can pick up another task. Now, now the final step is to avoid collaboration at all costs. Close collaboration will shortcut these long feedback loops. You know, if you pair program, you might not need code reviews. If you work closely with your customer, you could reduce the number of changes and maybe the size of those changes. You have to work alone for as long as possible. I promise that if you follow the always working principle, you will get nothing done and spend all your time doing it. And if you do get something done, it'll be months down the line and had much less impact than it should have. Thank you. <laughs>